Welcome aboard the Tabletop Express. I am back once again with Anthony, Board Game Dads. Uh, I'm excited tonight. Uh, we got a fun topic up to discuss our favorite roll and write games, but I think we need to clarify something right up front when we say roll and write games. We talked about this before, and when we're saying roll and write, we really mean the game with the dice. Um, because this category has kind of evolved over the, over the past, I'd say, few years at least. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's a there's a lot of versions of some some older existing games that have roll and write, uh, you know, implementations of them now. And yeah, they're just they're coming out like hotcakes. Yeah, and a lot of games that I think people put in the roll and write category end up being ones that are what you and I at least have discussed as flip and write. So. We'll hit on flip and write at another time. But today we are talking about games that are strictly roll and write, meaning there are dice involved in some way or form. Doesn't mean there's no cards. It just means we're, we're really focused on the dice part. But that said, let's start with you, my friend. Um, and let's talk about the first one that you've got up for discussion tonight. Sure. So this first one is... <sighs> A good pick for us because it's the dice roll and write version of an existing game that we cannot really play with only two players, and that's Settlers of Catan. Settlers of Catan, or just Catan now it's called, uh, is, a, is a pretty old game at this point. Uh, there's been multiple versions. If you've never played it, you should check it out. Some people really don't like it, but I think there is definitely a place for it in the hobby. Um you you want to be wary of who you play this game with, though, because it has been known to end or alter some relationships uh, throughout, <laughs> throughout its time on the table. But luckily, this is a much friendlier, scaled-down version, uh, Catan, the dice game. It has many of the same uh, mechanics, sort of, as Catan, in that you're gathering resources to build either roads or cities or uh, settlements and things like that. The biggest difference is you're rolling dice uh, to collect these resources. So this has a very familiar mechanic that if anybody's ever played Yahtzee before should recognize where you roll all the dice, you can kind of keep some off to the side, roll again. And I think you can only, you can roll a, a second time, I think up to three times and basically just look at what you've gathered on the, on the dice, the faces of the dice. And you do one of those, one of those building actions where you can get a person. Um, what's cool about this version is it's really small. It's portable. Um, Laura and I used to take this to the bar back in the before times when we could play games out in public places without fear of COVID. Uh, but that's a topic for another day. And yeah, it's a it's a good uh, it's a good implementation of a of a, a game that you can't just play with two people. And I will add, there's two different sides to the score sheets in this game too. Uh, so they have a little bit of a variation on uh, Island One versus Island Two. Have you played this ever? I've never played the dice version. Uh, I've played a lot of variations of it. Sure. Uh, I think I've worn a little thin on the game over the years, just because I think a lot of games have come out that do a lot of things better. Uh, but you cannot discount the importance of this game uh, in terms of the, the base and core game. Uh, and I'd, I'd give the dice version a try. I have found I like a lot of dice version of game where I don't like the main game uh, or I don't wouldn't want to get the main game to my table sure. as often, you know? Um, right. So to me, that that's definitely a big piece of the puzzle. Uh, yeah, bear I, with mean, me. I think my my one knock on it is the I think the replayability of it overall is on the lower end, um, which I guess is true for a lot of roll and rights. But I don't know for this one, it just it sometimes feels like you're really doing the same thing um, over and yeah. over again. But, you know, that's why you don't play it that often. Well, let me tell you, the one that I have uh, for for my first uh, discussion tonight is actually one I know you I think you have it I find it interesting uh, and what's interesting about this game overall is one there's two ways to play it has kind of a solo mode in it it's got something that you can do um, that they actually I believe they called adventure mode and then it's got the version you can play with your friends and this one to me is on my list for a few reasons um, and that one is is well nothing more than roll and write settlers it's imperial settlers roll and write uh is the official title actually you can see they've got these score sheets they've got all this stuff um 
And what's neat about this, I like the Imperial Settlers world. The, the world is great. Um, when it comes down to it, this game, a lot of fun. You're collecting resources and making choices on where you're going to spend those resources, ultimately with the goal of getting the most points. The reason I point out that there's two score sheets, by the way, and you can see some of them here, but I want to just kind of point it out. And this kind of drives me nuts in a way is you've got this, an adventure sheet. You can see that actually on the screen as well. The adventure sheet has all these cool, unique, different things, but there's one sheet of those each. And I, again, it's, it's, I wish this was, I, and maybe there's a laminated version out there, but it's one of those ones I would want to replay it over, over and over in terms of that adventure piece. So I may go out and laminate myself, right? I will want to share this for two reasons. One, I think this is a fun game. I like it a lot. Um, it's enjoyable. You're collecting resources. It's a familiarity to it. But this has an app, which is terrific. And honestly, you even if you don't want to own this game in your collection, the app is almost perfect, in my opinion. In, in terms of a game, uh, you can redo that kind of adventure mode and do all those adventures over and over. You can play it individually. You can do it, I believe, with pass and play. So I actually, as much as I like this game, I actually got to take the time and say the app is terrific and you should probably check it out. So if you have some extra bucks, go try that. Uh, overall fun game. I like the world it's in. And I think it is worth trying out if you have a chance to play it. So I, I have to kind of put this on the table and, and say, try it out. Um, if it's not for you, um, that's okay. But uh, this one gets to my table every once in a while. And I think it is worth having in my collection. So it's not my most commonly played game. But um, again, for me, we're phoning. I'm glad it's in my collection. <laughs> I've actually played this game once. Lauren and I played this at uh, at the Dice Tower Retreat a couple years back. And I don't. we didn't really love it. I've never played any of the actual board games that are in this in this world. So maybe yeah. there was that. You know, maybe like you said, there was a familiarity to it. Maybe that was a disconnect for me because I didn't know that game that well. Um, but I would certainly give the app a shot because that sounds like it does a lot of the busy work for you. Yeah. And I will just say it, it. The neat thing is with each of these turns, you have these little powers like, for example, export, uh, where you could trade up to three different resources, each for one victory point. You've got these different kind of powers that are you're getting to pick one each round so the way you play can vary every single time because you're picking different powers and I, I don't know again i like the world so that picks picks it up for me and if you do like this world i think you're gonna like this game uh i do think again the app might be the good testing ground though if you mm. can go try the app you like the app you're probably gonna like the physical version too that's fair that's fair all right, so before I get to my next pick, a real couple quick comments here that we see. We say uh, we see Josue in the chat, as always. What's up, brother? Good to see you. And um, going back to the Catan roll and write, Professor Ren here has a good comment. I prefer roll and writes where all players use the same dice rolls. Uh, Catan has a lot of downtime because of that. And that's a good point, right? A lot of yeah. roll and writes are you roll the dice and all the players are doing something with those dice either at the same time or, you know, cho uh, choosing them, taking turns. But Katan, you're kind of watching the other person do that uh, for sure. So I agree with you there. What's that? <laughs> yes, that is Think the answer. It. That is the answer to that problem for sure. Yeah. This is not on my list, by the way. Yeah, I just you managed, you managed to squeeze it in still, though. You just you just throw yeah. it up there. I've talked about this game on the last two videos I've done with Anthony. So if you want to know more about that game, uh, which is King Domino Duel, please uh, go check out those. But yeah, uh, that's it a is. great point. Thank you, uh, Professor Ren, for popping in and adding that. Uh, really great point. <laughs> All right. So on to my next pick here. This game is easily the heaviest roll and write game that I've played that I own. It is a game that also has a board game version. However, I've never played that version. And this is Fleet the Dice Game, which, yes, I have also mentioned on previous uh, videos. But I like it that much. This game has so much going on there are two score sheets that are really really big and so there's so many sections to cross off it feels like a, a, a multiple choice like scantron test that you used to do back in high school but basically you you roll all the dice and again everyone is going to be looking at and using those dice one person will take one and do that action the next person will take the next one and there's always going to be one die that's left that no one chose that becomes a shared die. So there's decision-making in terms of, you know, do I want to 
take this die face, even though it's not super beneficial to me, but I know my opponent really needs it. I may take that so that he or she doesn't get it, right? Or there's a thinking like, all right, two of these same die faces come up. I don't want my opponent to get, you know, six coins, so I can't let her take both of those coin things. So there's a lot going on in terms of just choosing the dice and then deciding where you want to do this, right? In most roller rights, you're filling in like a line of numbers or X's or things like that. There are so many sections to fill in in this game. It's crazy. There's different kinds of fish that you go for. You're getting... Uh, boats, you're getting fishing licenses, you're going to uh, the fish market to sell fish for coins, you're building these buildings in the wharf area, there's a lot going on, a lot of decisions, uh, we love this game, gets to the table quite often, and we even got an expansion recently called uh, Dicey Waters, which is a little tiny, tiny score pad, it adds I think seven or eight new types of buildings in addition to the ones that are already there, I highly recommend this game, it got played, this was a Kickstarter, by the way, and this was the game that I played the fastest after, like, receiving it. Like, it came in the mail, we played it that night, and that almost never happens, and we've played it a ton since then. Can't talk you, about it You know, you mentioned that, I think, on the last one, and it definitely caught my attention that it got played quickly, because breaking out a game, learning it quickly, and, mm -hmm. and, and that that's a process to that. Um, even with a simple dice game, uh, which again, this one has a lot of different ways to score because I've looked at this after the fact. And I love the variety of how you can score uh, a, a point salad of sorts happening. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and I love that. I think that's a ton of fun in this type of game. And I think that when the roll and rights have it, it just it adds to the strategy that goes into it. Sure. It makes it, sure. it, it definitely adds, it makes it heavier, but I think in a good way. Um, you know, I will say that the next game I'm going to talk about is one I've only had a chance to play once. I do not own a copy. So I want to just stress that uh, right away. However, a friend of the channel, Ryan Farrell, is basically was able to send me a photo of his copy. He's actually run live streams of this from his own, uh, on his own Facebook. And I, I, I just... It caught my eye the moment he, he he showed it. That's Railroad Inc. And Railroad Inc. is a really neat game. Now, there's a, I, a actually, because I asked him, there's multiple versions of this game. They come with right. these like little mini expansions. He claimed, uh, as I was talking to him, he said, I thought the red one came with volcanoes. I, and, and again, uh, I see that he had to copy the blue one, and the blue one was the one that I was looking at. But what's neat about this game is you are, rolling dice you are creating these paths and you are trying to uh so essentially score points by creating routes now I, whenever anyone says routes and trains i know they think of like ticket to ride or something but uh in this one uh, again i just think it's a really cool iteration of getting trains to the table in a different way because quite frankly i think you could be ticket to ride it out uh, and this is, I think, a very different game. The other thing about these dice is uh, they're pretty cool in design. Uh, there's multiple multiple uh, varieties in what you're seeing here as on the right-hand side of the screen. And the scoring is a few ways. There's some longest routes and, and stuff like that in there. So multiple ways to score the end points at the end of the game, which, again, point salad of sorts, which is always a good thing. Definitely not to the level of what you just shared, certainly. But this one is a beautiful looking game. It looks great on the table. I think you can get this to the table with a lot of people. I would argue you may have a little bit more of a challenging time explaining this to those who aren't used to a roll and write or don't play games all the time because I think some of the scoring gets a little bit more complicated than some people yeah. are used to. Yeah, I agree. That's the one thing I would say about this. Um, great game, but I think this is more of a gamer's or the next step to be being a gamer like i've played some games and i'm ready to try something new that's where i think this game falls in terms of who's going to want to actually play it certainly yeah for sure and it's it's you know arguably maybe not as heavy as fleet like you said but the big difference is with fleet it is still your rolling stuff and filling certain things in right coloring in dots and whatever right. but this is a much more spatial game right and it like you said it does take that to the next level because you're not just drawing these nice you know roads and, and and railroad tracks and things like that you have to really really think multiple steps ahead really if you want to complete your routes the right way 
Um, we, I, I like this game a lot. I own the blue version as well. Um, although I think I've yet to play with the actual expansion dice in there. Uh, my wife doesn't love this game, so it hasn't gotten to the table in quite some time. Uh, at one point, we did try to teach um, our neighbor, who we've gotten to play many, many games with us, and she's always a good sport and learns everything. We sat down to, the, to, to Railroad Inc. I told her a couple of rules, and she was like, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. And, and I totally no. got why. I totally got why. Like, I didn't try to convince her, like, oh, it'll be okay. I get it. It's not. It's, if it doesn't feel right for you, it's a lot of thinking. You're not going to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, though, I will say it does truly stand out as a great game and as a game that if someone's familiar with and you want to take them to a new level, this is actually a great test. I, I mean, I think if they suddenly can take an interest in this after playing some other games and they can do this, you know they can handle a lot more. So uh, in that way, it could be pretty useful in kind of telling when you're ready to go to that next level of game. So... Agreed. But I know you've got another one that is quite popular, I'm sure, with many people who may be watching right now. Um, and it's definitely a, a familiar one. Yeah, I think so. So this next game is called Quinto, which um, is, I guess, the most typical looking roll and write game on at least my list in that it's a real small score pad, as you can see there, with just some rows that have some symbols and you're going to be writing numbers in those rows. You have to write these numbers in ascending order from left to right, but you can skip around where you put them. Now, the, the big difference between this and, say, a game like Quix, where you're adding a couple of dice together, you can choose in this game to roll one, two, or three dice. So you can give yourself kind of a range of what totals you're looking for. Obviously, you're not guaranteed to get them, um, but there's a little variability in that. Also... You notice that some of the shapes in those rows are circles and some of them are pentagons. The pentagons line up in the columns and that's another way to get extra points. If you're able to fill in that whole column, you'll get, I believe, the largest number that you have in that pentagon shape. Um, like other roller rights, there are some, some penalties in this game. Like if you can't make a move, you can't write a number, you have to take an X or whatever and you lose uh, five points, I think, in this one. But... Another real simple one, very easy to teach, very portable, doesn't take up a lot of room, and plays pretty quickly. Yeah, I I think when it comes down to it, this definitely seems like that classic roll and write that a lot of people, yeah. would, especially when roll and write's first starting popular, people knew of some of these. Um, they got a lot more advanced since this and, and Quicks and yeah. other things came out. So, And I'm glad, personally, because it, it's nice to be able to say, hey, here's Quinto, here's Quicks, and okay, now here's some next step games and, and right. we can kind of take people through. And again, as we said before, it kind of evolved into the flip and right category, which we categorize separately, but often you'll see these on the same list. So right, right. It, and, it's yeah, important it, to clarify that, you know? Oh yeah. And it is a crowded genre, the roll and write, like we said earlier, I, personally, I'm not getting tired of it because I think there's enough of them coming out and there's enough that I like. So go ahead and keep making but them. There's not, that, there's not too <laughs> many. I will say that about this. There's not too many of these. Um, it's not mm. at, I think, a saturation level just yet. Mm. It's 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 in a trending area for sure. That perhaps is debatable. I mean, I, and I will just say to everybody who's watching, please feel free to share some of your favorite role and rights. While we're talking here, we'd love to share some of those during and at the end of a show. In the meantime, I'm going to jump right into my next one. And my next one is, that's pretty clever. Uh, one, I... I, I I love that that general title of that's pretty clever. Um, <laughs> that's a translation that, thing there. It's interesting. <laughs> I I know. Um, I will go with that's pretty clever because one, it's going to sound a lot better coming out of my mouth. Um, and two, I just like that title. But this one, I have to say, I really like a lot. You've got all these different colored dice. The the white die is kind of a wild, and there these all these different areas score differently. And to me. Um, it's pretty easy to teach in the sense of, and, and this is one that I don't own, but I played multiple times and it's on my, will be added to my collection some point in the next year list. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you look at this, some things are pretty straightforward. For example, in that yellow and blue area, you are going to want to complete these rows to collect certain amounts of points, uh, in, as you get to the, the bottom, uh, bottom row, um, you have these, also these extra bonus and multipliers that are, 
a little bit more easy to obtain. And those multipliers and extra kind of powers, you could almost say, uh, as we would say in other games, give you these other things like re-rolling or adding plus one to a die. So right. you can start to strategically think as you play this game. It really is, um, pardon the pun, cleverly designed in that way. Now, this one is also extremely accessible, and that's the other thing I like about it. Uh, you can teach this one, again, fairly easy, um, you know, and for me, that's a big part of it. I want a collection of roll and writes of varying levels. And this is what I'm going to be able to pull to the table with my family, with my, with my son's friends. Uh, and we're going to be able to teach this, play this in a short amount of time. So right. if that's something you're looking for, this definitely does that. Uh, and it falls in that, I, I don't want to say standard price range, but it's that, 15 to 25 dollar price range that a lot of these great roll and write games actually fall in so right i right. i don't know if you've played this one um i, I have played this one have time one. i played it once uh at a board game cafe i forget i think it was in new york city somewhere um and uh we liked it yeah we liked it a lot haven't picked it up but definitely enjoyed it there we should note there's another one called what twice as clever right yes Twice as clever. And I don't know what the difference is. There's probably just different ways to score on that score sheet, I would imagine. By the way, we uh, do have uh, Bad Kitty saying, all my favorite rolling rights are actually flipping rights. Welcome to <laughs> Photographers. We'll, we'll get to these on, on a future episode, I promise, because... Uh, all, all great uh, games, too. Yes. And Anthony, I actually, over 2020, played... Welcome to over Zoom uh, once or twice. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. welcome to is definitely on the list. And I love cartographers. I could, if you want to talk about cartographers, I'll talk about it all day long. Oh, I love yeah. that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we're not talking about cartographers now. You got another game coming up on your list. Yep. So, this is another small one. Um, I picked this one because I feel like it's the most under the radar sort of one that hasn't really, I don't hear talk, get talked about very often at all. Um, and it's called Harvest Dice. One of the reasons why I really like this one is it combines two things that my wife and I really enjoy about games. It's a roll and write for one, and it's also about food. Um, we love gardening, things like that. We love the outdoors. And, and in this game, you get to use, if you want, colored pencils because you're actually drawing tomatoes, carrots, and lettuce. So you're not just writing X's or writing numbers. You're drawing little tiny vegetables. I know you can use colored pencils in any roll and write, but for this one, it looks kind of cool because... You know, it's colored vegetables. It looks cool when you're done. Um, it looks a lot simpler than it is. It's not super complicated by any means, but there's, again, another little bit of a spatial element to it in that when you're planting these vegetables, once you plant one type, say carrot, your other carrots do have to be adjacent to that square as the game goes on. Uh, but basically, you just roll these different colored dice that represent the different vegetables, and on the score sheet, there's columns with the different amounts of, of pips on the die. And that's where in that column, you're going to draw that particular vegetable. If you choose not to plant vegetables, you can also feed the pig. So on the lower left of the score sheet, you'll see a big pig chart. All you would do is choose that, that die. Let's say there were five pips on it. You would cross off five little dots on that pig thing. That's going to get you points and the ability to alter some dice rolls throughout the game so it does pay to send some veggies over to the pig every now and then um the other thing that's impressive about this game in a small package is the scoring is pretty variable because the other thing that's different is there's basically like a market value to each of these vegetables that changes from game to game from game to game excuse me because you're going to cross out those little circles in those baskets and at the end of the game you're going to use that as sort of a multiplier on how many points you get from each vegetable. So uh, some very swingy scores in this. Again, kind of a lot in a small package. Great to break out, you know, around the fall time, Thanksgiving, as you can see, my my beautiful photography here uh, goes on display. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend this one. Again, I think it's in that sweet spot of 15, 20 bucks. Not a lot of people talk about it. Check it out though, tons of fun. Harvest Dice. What I love about this one is the the theme is kind of, oozing off the just the look and feel and yeah <laughs> uh, it I, I like by the way I, I have to like the economy piece if if we want to call it that or that multiplier uh, it does remind me of welcome to uh which right. is a game that again if, that that has that as one of the bottom um one right on the bottom of your sheet 
And I like that because every get you could think someone is not doing that well. And suddenly it's like, oh, wait a minute. They've got a multiplier and they've got all those carrots. Right. Oh, no. <clears throat> uh, and it, it, it adds up really, really quick. Um, look, uh, the the game for me, uh, actually, before we go ahead, actually, it looks like we have a question. So maybe we can reply to this. So it looks great. Is it too complicated for kids around 12 years old? Um, about harvest dice specifically? No, I don't, I don't think that's too complicated at all. Um, there really are only a couple of rules and, uh, you know, a as long as you can kind of tell that you have to sort of separate your vegetables and not have them all in the middle, cause you're going to have to be adjacent to them all the time. I think kids can pick this one up. I'm not sure what the age range is suggested on the box. It's it's kind of far away, but I don't put a lot of stock into that anyway, to be honest, because everybody's no. different. So to answer your question in a short way now, no, I don't think it's too complicated. You know, I will say on age range, just as an interesting topic, I'm, I'm not the biggest believer in the age range on a box. Um, I think every kid is different. Yeah. Um, but that one, based on what I've read, definitely I, I feel like could be, 12 year old that it's fairly straightforward more complicated than it looks but i don't think complicated is the word i would use to describe it either yeah, um, yeah. you know for me uh, i wanted to share a game that jumped out to me i ended up pre-ordering this uh after seeing it packs unplugged playing it on uh on the actually one of the tables that was designed by this company and that's always unique to me that the fact that this company made board game tables and then they decided to make a game, but they made tables first from my understanding. And that is none other than on tour. Now on tour, I should note has a Europe version and a USA version. The game is the same. The game is the same. What you are doing is you are rolling these nice chunky die and you got two of them and numbers are going to be coming up. And those numbers are going to be what you're filling in across all these locations on the map. What you want to do is make a route connecting numbers from essentially one to 100. It's a little complicated because you have some bonuses that can occur. Uh, you, you have, for example, on some of these cards, uh, you know, just a different state that if you were to put it in that, you're going to get a little bit of an extra, you know, reasoning to want to go there. It's going to make it so you're going to make your life a little bit easier because essentially uh, in this game, you're you're marking numbers in. But when you can do do things that are, do things in these ideal places, you essentially can put a star, which means you can go any number in order through. So you are strategically trying to go through three cards are going to actually come down and you're picking essentially two routes on each round. And then at the end of the game, you're seeing who made the longest route. So here we are, another longest route. This is a, a game certainly that has dice. It is a, certainly a roll and write in that way. But I have to say, it comes with these gorgeous boards. The boards that you're looking at flip over. And you've got Europe on one side, United States on the other. Uh, the dry, dry erase, all right there. So the quality of this game uh, is top notch. And... This does get to my table uh, every once in a while throughout the year, and this will get probably 10 plays, 15 plays in a year. It's not going to be the um, it's not going to be the game that I I uh, I try take with me on a trip because as uh, as Melissa points out, the thank you, Melissa, because this is perfect timing. It it is a pretty large box. This <laughs> box is not small. This is the box, um, yeah, as you can yeah. see. It, covers a lot of my head um and that's not small either but i i will say great game highly recommend it if you can get this in your house it's definitely like i say not one you're probably taking on long trips but definitely worth owning and sharing with friends family and hypothetically if you gave one of these boards to a friend or family member you could do this over zoom so that's the other thing i gotta point out i could give because i've got plenty of boards one or two boards over to you and lauren and i could say hey let's play sometime and to me, that's neat, neat part of it. It just means someone's yeah. got to take over rolling and drawing the cards. So to me, that's a winner, uh, especially nowadays when I'm trying to get games in with people. Right, right. Yeah, I've actually played this over Zoom uh, with friends of mine, with with Eric and Melissa, actually. And uh, it, did, it did work. It's just not my favorite game. Um, a couple things. I, I think the board looks cool. It is, it is big, but it looks really cool. 
I was not very good at the game, which is not necessarily a deterrent for me, but the first time I played this game, I think I had two spaces next to each other, and one of them one of them was like two, and I think the other one was like 98 or something. It was like <laughs> so far from being correct, um, it, and it, it was will, really bad. It will happen. <laughs> it, will, it will happen. But you'll be surprised how many you can connect. Uh, I think after multiple, you, yeah. it is definitely a game that you get better at. Um, and I will, right, right. so in, in all fairness, I will say, if someone has this game and played played this game 15, 20 times and someone's played this once, there is an advantage. So sure. let's be honest about that. But if you play this, this is a game that if you play at equal levels can be very competitive and I think a ton of fun. Uh, but you make a really good point. And I will ask, did uh, how did Lauren do at the game and, and did, did she beat you? in the process uh, i don't recall but she probably did I, I don't know yeah we're just gonna assume that um yeah. i'm sure she's listening or watching later so we're just gonna say i didn't that know there was for... there was a european version of this though that's interesting that's, yes. uh yes european version which came with the newer box if you have the original version it didn't have a european uh the newer one the second one mm -hmm. that they made had it and they put both in one box which oh, is okay. wonderful cool yeah it's like 30 bucks for both but i mean i again I thought the MSRP was pretty fair uh, considering what they put in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my last pick is similar in the fact that it's actually a map of the United States as well. Much smaller map and a little more boxy and less smooth than the uh, on tour one. But this game is called rolling America. Uh, this is another really good game to get out on the table or take with you somewhere because it is so small and compact you can see there it just comes with your score sheets and a few dice. Now, I think this is a good game for someone who enjoys puzzly sort of things like a Sudoku type of puzzle. It's not exactly like that, but it is in a way because there are some restrictions when you put these numbers on the map. So basically, on any turn, you're going to draw uh, two of these dice out of the bag and roll them. And whatever colors those are, those are the two colors, uh, states or, you know, boxes, sections on here that you have to put the numbers in with the catch that numbers that are adjacent to other numbers have to be only one number away. Right? So there's a lot of times in this game where you roll those dice. And this is a game, by the way, where everyone uses the rolls and you're just like, ah, oh, crap, I can't put a, a green six anywhere there's 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 a three here and a two here and a one here that's not going to work so there's ways to mitigate that with these little special abilities that you have in the lower left hand corner where you can change the color or uh protect the number basically and and break that rule of not having to be one number away but <laughs> this game is punishing because when you use those they count against you later in the game the twist on this is this game you win by getting the lowest score. So it's sort of like golf in that aspect. You're counting up at the end of the game all the X's on your map. So anytime you can't place a number somewhere, you've got to cross off one of those states, one of those sections. And then at the end of the game, you count up all of your X's. Oh, oh by the way, no. What, when the last round of the game is over, before you do your scoring, whatever's blank, you put X's in. So you're like, Game's over. You're like, ah, oh, I, I did okay. And you're like, oh, wait, I gotta do this. And you're like just crossing things off. And it it's a brutal one. It's a very, very frustrating game at times. Um, but I guess we like it because it gets played quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I just another one that looks kind of cool. And another one that does have at least one other map. I know there's a game called Rolling Japan. And I, I think there might be another one, but I'm not positive on that. I... I, by the way, I, I don't want to have to share this, but I'm going to share this. Apparently she didn't do well either on, on tour. So ah. I was, I was hoping to, I was hoping to hold it over your <laughs> bike. There'll be plenty of opportunities yeah. for you to do that. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, as I think about game, it's funny, you talked about uh, a game earlier that directly relates to the one that I'm going to share. And so I'm going to jump right into it. And that's quick. I mean, look, this game hits my table a lot. I am a big believer in the family dinner game and my family sits down to the table and my son will say, what are we playing? That is what is happening in our house. We conversation occurs over a game. A lot of these games need to be accessible. So Quix was one of them that came into my house. Um, I played it before, but I finally got it last year. 
and we play this constantly. Um, nope. Did we lose Chris again? <laughs> Can y'all hear me? All right, so I'm going to assume that you can hear me, and by my phone making a noise makes me think that you can as well. So real quick, I'm going to address one comment here from Eric, who is, is, is pouting because there was no love here for Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. Uh, I got to tell you, that one was kind of tied between that and i believe Catan. i wanted to pick only one game that had a dice version of a larger game i i, I do like that game a lot though castles of burgundy the i want to i i want to jump in and just say yes um apologies <laughs> for that um that is the I don't. I did not intend to leave and avoid your question. Just for the record, uh, no, it's a fantastic game. From what I've heard, I've never played the dice game mm. of of Castle of Burgundy, and I would like to. So it's on my list to play. I am sure I would love it. I'm I'm positive, but I, I don't want to speak to a game that I've never played. It it doesn't seem right. Um, so these are certainly games we've played <laughs> in this particular case. Um, I, I do want to say though, when it comes down to it, uh. With quicks, let me just say, great family game, uh, really easy to teach. Uh, the fact is, you are sharing the dice, and that's a, a neat factor of it. But when you are not the active player, you you played a little bit differently. You're you're going off of just to you know the dice that are out there uh, of the colors, but then you've got this ability to use the white die when you're the active player too do a second one. And to me, it just adds this nice advantage, the active player, but you don't always want to do it. And, right. and Anthony, you said it before the penalty of like five points, same penalty in this game. If you go too long with not doing that as active users, that's what's going to occur. You're going to get a five point, uh, a five point penalty. And you can easily have pretty low scores in this game. If you incur enough of those, uh, mm -hmm. I don't find it happens too much, but Really fun game. It is called a, it, it literally calls itself a fast family dice game. And let me tell you, it is a fast family dice game. Uh, and there is nothing wrong with that. But I will tell you, it's not a bad game in between, like a, a heavy game for me either. Like you just oh, need yeah. to <clears throat> take a break. This works perfectly fine. I think uh, it, it's great for a lot of different uh, levels of gamer. But yeah, take this for you. If, if you don't have any dice game, uh, and you're uh, and you're looking for something for your family, and you don't don't play a ton of of games, and you're trying to get into it. This is a great game. Break it oh, out. Yeah. I think your family will like it, and you'll you'll be able to learn it and teach it. No problem. Kids of all ages. So for sure, that, Very, that is it, my it, choice. Yeah, quicks. So that is what I will be saying. Um, again, these are not like ranked. Like this is not my number one. Um, these are just five of our favorites, and um, it's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to say where. That Castle Burgundy dice game would go because I've heard really good things, so I'd love to check that out. If, it is really uh, good. anyone if has you a like copy Castle of that, Burgundy, send it our way. Our game like <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure I would. I'm sure I would. And then it, right. I believe the end? you have one more. Do I have no, one more? You have no. one more. Oh, we don't. See, no, I, went first. I, I wanted one more so bad. I was <laughs> the last one tonight. Um, I will just say, um, yeah, I didn't mention it. Um, we've talked about some other games that are rolling rights in some of the other videos. So feel free to check those out there on both my channel, uh, the Tabletop Express. They're on Board Game Dads uh, over there with Anthony's channel, where I know you are, uh, a bunch of you are tuning in from. I saw a bunch of people on, my, on the Facebook page for Tabletop Express. So I thank you all for joining in as well. Uh, if you, again, have any other games you would love to recommend, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear them and hear those suggestions. And again, yeah, this is just five. This is not like the complete collection. If you actually go on Board Game Geek, there's quite a few great lists of roll and write games. But again, most of those lists are going to include, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but they're going to include those flipping rights. And right. um, for for our purposes, we didn't want to include them because we'll do a whole different thing about flipping rights, which I actually would argue we should probably not tell each other because 
we're going to double up and I'm really interested where we're going to double up if we have to pick our favorites. That's um, true. Because there's a true. few I know you love and I there's a bunch I love. So, um, and uh, with that said, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you do have any questions about any of these games ever, obviously uh, Anthony and I are happy to answer them. Uh, we thank you for supporting our channels and for for being there and checking out our content. Uh, we're having a fun time doing it and we'll be back with more. Um, I don't know what's coming up on your channel, Anthony. I know that you have something coming up. I believe tomorrow is spouses day and you have uh, some good advice on your channel right now. That's right. Yes. We, uh, we put up a video, Eric and I um, a few days ago about spouses day. We have a lot of game suggestions that play well with two players. Um, we talk about some favorite gifts that we've given and received. So yeah, tomorrow play some games with your spouse, your significant other, or anybody really, because any day is a great day, a great day to play games. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to share that on Thursday, I've got a double feature of sorts. I have Jamie Stegmeyer joining me for creators corner at noon. Uh, really excited to have Jamie join on, on that and talk to me a little bit. Uh, about uh, his career path and and just creating games. Um, Jamie's obviously a great guy and and behind some really fantastic games. And to on that Thursday night, I have a, a conversation about the crew, and we'll be sharing if the crew is for you. I've got a great guest joining me uh, who uh, has not been on the channel yet. So excited to welcome someone aboard the Express. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, tune in noon on Tabletop Express. Jamie Stegmeyer, I, I, I'm definitely probably the big feature for a few people that day, um, but I hope you'll tune in for the crew too, because the crew is going to be a good conversation. Great game. So uh, with all that said, I'm just going to say thank you for tuning in and welcome aboard the Tabletop, Tabletop Express, and we'll both see you very soon. I'm sure Anthony and I will be coming up with yet another topic to share with you. Have a good night, yeah. everyone. Bye.